In this program, we're going to cover repair procedures for Saturn's four-speed automatic transaxle. First, we'll identify major components and their operation. Then we'll quickly review diagnosis, followed by service and repair procedures. To begin, let's look at some of the design features of this transaxle. The Saturn automatic transaxle uses a parallel shaft arrangement similar to that found on most front-wheel drive manual transaxles. The unit uses four multiple disc clutches to connect gears to the shafts. Also, a first gear sprag clutch is used. A sliding dog clutch is used for forward second and reverse gear ranges. Shift timing, shift feel, and onboard diagnostics are electronically controlled by a powertrain control module, or PCM. The PCM, in turn, controls five actuators that direct hydraulic flow to the clutches. You should also know that this transaxle is available in two versions. Single overhead cam engines with throttle body fuel injection are teamed with transaxles coded MP6. The transaxle for double overhead cam MFI engines is a high performance version coded MP7. Each transaxle has gear ratios designed to correspond with engine torque output to provide smooth, economical, and responsive performance. Externally, the transaxle features a converter housing, a case, a rear cover, and a valve body cover. The actuators that control hydraulic flow to the clutches are seated in the valve body in the following arrangement. Fourth clutch, third clutch, torque converter clutch, second and reverse clutch, and line pressure. You'll notice there's no first clutch actuator. That's because, as you'll see later, the first clutch is applied in all forward ranges and controlled by the manual valve. The converter housing is bolted to the engine and is supported through the front and rear mounts. The converter housing provides mounting for the shift cable, which has its own adjustment procedure that we'll discuss later. This transaxle features a three-element torque converter with a lock-up clutch, input and output shafts, a final drive differential, a reverse idler gear, and an engine-driven gear-type oil pump. Drive axles for the Saturn automatic transaxle are equal length with tripod inner joints and Rezepa outer joints. The right axle mounts to an intermediate drive axle assembly that is supported by the engine. Now that we've seen the major assemblies, let's focus on each to get an understanding of operation. The torque converter assembly is made up of components common to other transaxles you're familiar with. Primary components include the pump, the stator, the turbine, the torque converter clutch, and the torque converter cover. The input and output shafts are each supported by ball and roller bearings, and the differential is supported by ball bearings. The various clutches and their components are located on the input and output shafts in the following arrangement. The forward reverse dog clutch is on the output shaft. It consists of a hub, the reverse driven gear, the second driven gear, and a sliding sleeve. Operation of the sleeve is similar to range selection on some four-wheel drive transfer cases. A servo controls sleeve position. When the driver shifts to reverse, the servo causes the sleeve to move in the direction of the reverse driven gear. In any other range, the sleeve moves toward the second driven gear to allow forward motion of the vehicle. The second reverse clutch is located on the input shaft and is part of the second reverse and third clutch housing. Its main components are a housing, a piston, a return spring assembly, a clutch pack, and the second reverse speed drive gear. The first speed clutch is on the input shaft just inside the rear cover. Main components are a housing, a piston, a return spring assembly, a clutch pack, and the first speed drive gear. First gear is applied in all forward ranges and speeds. To accomplish this, a sprag clutch is used in the first speed driven gear on the output shaft. During acceleration in first gear, when the shaft speed is increasing, the sprag holds the first speed driven gear to the output shaft. During deceleration, when shaft speed is decreasing, and in second, third, or fourth speed ranges, the sprag releases and freewheels to prevent bind-up of the transaxle caused by having two speed ranges engaged at the same time. The third clutch is located on the input shaft in the same housing as the second reverse clutch. Its components are similar to the other clutches with the third speed drive gear located as shown. 
The fourth clutch is on the output shaft. The fourth speed-driven gear is found next to the clutch pack. And finally, there are the final drive components consisting of a pinion gear that is an integral part of the output shaft, a ring gear differential case, and an open type design differential gear set that allows action in three modes. Here's power flow from the input shaft through the drive and driven gears to the output shaft for each speed range. Reverse, first, second, third, and fourth. Diagnosis on the Saturn automatic transaxle begins with verification of a malfunction. First, review the service advisor's write-up on the customer's service order to determine the nature of the problem. Malfunctions can be of three types, fluid leak, excessive noise, or improper operation. Then perform a visual inspection of the transaxle and its related parts. Look for any signs of fluid leak. And of course, check the fluid for proper level and color. Excessive discoloration indicates a contamination or overheating of the fluid. Check your service manual for specific causes. After a visual inspection, perform a road test to verify the customer's comments. Put the vehicle through all of its ranges and speeds to check for shift feel and timing. You may use the portable diagnostic tool to review and collect system data. After you've verified the malfunction, Use the service stall system to perform functional tests of the various input devices, relays, actuators, and warning lamps. While the actuators can be checked using the service stall system, another quick and direct way to check their operation is by listening to them. Begin by grounding terminal B of the ALDL connector. Then with the ignition key on and the engine off, you can move the gear selector through each position to check the actuators. Each actuator can be activated from a gear selector position. When an actuator is selected, it modulates at a constant duty cycle for 19 seconds. Then it will pause and repeat. This action causes the actuator to buzz if it's operating normally. Be aware, however, that some trouble codes disable this kind of output cycling. Be sure that the condition you're diagnosing works with this procedure. Another diagnostic method is the line pressure check. Begin by removing the transaxle temperature sensor and installing the pressure gauge. Connect the portable diagnostic tool and turn the key to the run position. On the first PDT menu selection, select Special Test. Then select Line Pressure. The PDT will prompt you to start the engine. Select Run and the test will begin. The test sets engine speed at 1500 RPM and commands line pressure from minimum to maximum in 100 kilopascal intervals. As the test is in progress, watch the gauge to ensure that readings follow the command pressures as indicated in the service manual. When you're reinstalling the temperature sensor, remember to use the service manual recommended sealant on the threads. As part of the diagnosis, you can check the apply circuit passages. To do so, use a rubber-tipped air gun with regulated air pressure to apply pressure through the transaxle case passages. Your ability to properly service a customer's vehicle is an important element of our commitment to success. Use your own knowledge and what you learn here to make service procedures easy and complete. Internal component repairs to the automatic transaxle are made by replacing the assembly as a unit. The following external components, however, are serviceable.
Accessing some of these components requires removal of the passenger compartment console. Check your service manual for complete console removal instructions. With the console removed, the brake transmission system interlock solenoid, or BTSI, is easily accessible. To remove the solenoid, first separate it from the electrical connector. Remove the solenoid from the shift control assembly. Then, separate the park lock lever link from the solenoid. The park sense switch is also reached with the console removed. First, separate the switch electrical connector. Then, remove the switch from the shift control assembly. Replacing the shift mode switch is a similar process. You remove the switch by squeezing the tangs, then disconnect the electrical connector. To remove the shift cable, begin by moving the shift control lever to the D2 position. Then, separate the shift cable from the shift control lever by pulling it or using a flat-bladed screwdriver. Using pliers to press the cable housing retaining tabs, pull the cable from the shift control assembly. For access to the transaxle cable connection, remove the air induction tube. To disconnect the shift cable from the transaxle, follow these steps. Pull the shift cable end from the manual shaft lever. Use pliers to press the cable housing retaining tabs and pull the cable from the converter housing. Then remove the cable grommet at the cowl by pushing on the rim of the grommet and remove the shift cable from the vehicle. Install the cable by pulling the grommet into the front of the dash. Then push the cable housing into the converter housing. To adjust the cable after it's been installed, first move the shift control lever to the park position. After rotating the transaxle manual shaft lever to park, rock the vehicle to make sure the parking pawl is engaged. Then push the cable housing back and forth to see free play in the adjustment. Move the cable housing to the middle of free play travel and push in the lock tab. After installing the air induction tube, check operation of the shift control lever in each range position. To install the console after servicing these components, reverse the removal procedure. The remaining serviceable components are reached through a combination of underhood and hoist procedures. Filter and sensor removal will be covered in the hands-on portion of your training. Therefore, we'll concern ourselves only with cooler lines, drive axle seals, the valve body, and transaxle unit replacement. To remove the oil cooler lines, first remove the air induction tube. On vehicles with double overhead cam engines, also remove the air box for better access. To remove the upper cooler line, separate the line from the transaxle by squeezing the tabs of the fitting connector and pulling the line. To remove the lower cooler line, separate the line from the transaxle the same as for the upper line. Use a screwdriver to lift the fastener center of the front splash shield, then remove the shield. Remove the transaxle fitting connector from each line by using a small screwdriver to pry the tabs away from the rib on the line. Inspect the transaxle fittings and retainers for wear or damage and replace them if necessary. Installing the cooler lines is simply the reverse of the removal process. Be sure to install the retainers into the cooler line connectors or onto the lines before connecting the lines. To replace the drive axle seals, we'll begin at the left wheel. First, raise the vehicle and drain the transaxle of fluid. Then remove the lower ball joint by first removing the cotter pin and partially removing the nut. On ABS equipped vehicles, be careful not to damage the sensor ring on the drive axle. Even very minor damage to the ring can cause a poor sensor signal. Then use the special tool to push the stud from the knuckle. The nut can then be fully removed. With the ball joint removed, Separate the drive axle from the transaxle using a large screwdriver. Remove and support the drive axle. Remove the drive axle seal by first removing the dust cover with a chisel. 
Next, thread the axle seal puller tool into the seal body as close to the outside diameter as possible and remove the seal. Installing a new drive axle seal is pretty much the reverse of removal. Begin by using the axle seal installer special tool and a hammer to install the new seal. Then install the drive axle into the transaxle. Be careful not to run the retaining ring or splines across the surface of the new seal. Install the lower ball joint and tighten the nut. Also use a new cotter pin. Again, be careful not to tear the outer joint boot or damage the ABS sensor ring with the wrench. Install the left front wheel, lower the car, and tighten the nuts using a crisscross pattern. Finally, fill the transaxle with Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid. Pour slowly since this transaxle isn't vented and filling too fast will cause oil to splash out. A note here concerning fluid capacity for this transaxle. There are three different levels depending on the extent of service performed. If you've simply drained the old fluid, 2.8 liters of new fluid are needed. After draining and a filter change, 3.3 liters are needed. And after an overhaul, 6.8 liters are required. Removing the right drive axle seal is similar to the left through ball joint removal. After that, the procedure alters because of the intermediate shaft. To separate the drive axle and intermediate shaft from the transaxle, first remove the intake manifold support bracket. Then remove the cranking motor support bracket. Next, remove the intermediate drive shaft support. Then remove the drive axle and intermediate shaft from the transaxle. Removing the drive axle seal is the same as for the side, as is the installation procedure. Removing the valve body from the transaxle can be done with the vehicle lowered and a drain pan under the transaxle. First, you must remove the battery tray to gain access to the entire valve body. Remove the tray by disconnecting the battery negative cable first, followed by the positive cable. Then loosen and remove the battery shield, lift the battery out, then remove the battery tray. Note that two of its bolts are located in the fender shield. With the battery tray removed, the valve body cover can now be removed. For vehicles equipped with ABS, the master cylinder must be moved in order to gain access to the valve body cover. To accomplish this, remove the master cylinder to booster nuts, then lift the master cylinder slightly and support it with wire. Remove the transaxle electrical connector at the valve body cover, remove the cover bolts, and remove the cover and gasket. With the valve body cover out of the way, the actuators can be removed. Begin by removing the actuator cover. Remove the actuator connector assembly. When removing an actuator, twist it as you gently pull it out. To install the actuators, reverse the procedure. Be sure to align the actuator pins with the connector plate for proper fit. Getting back to valve body removal, remove the 11 bolts holding the valve body to the transaxle case, but not this bolt. It holds the upper and lower valve bodies together. With the bolts removed, the valve body can be lifted from the transaxle and the manual valve disconnected. When installing a new valve body, reverse the procedure. Be careful to rotate the manual valve to its correct position with the flat side up before attaching it. On ABS equipped cars, be sure to remove the wire that was used to support the master cylinder. And be aware that there are two different torque specifications for the valve body bolts depending on their location. Consult your service manual. Since internal transaxle repairs are made by replacing the unit as an assembly, transaxle removal is especially important. First, disconnect and remove the battery shield and the battery tray. Then remove the air induction tube. Separate these electrical connectors and the grounding wire at the converter housing studs. Then unclip the oxygen sensor wire from the converter housing. Remove the top two converter housing to engine block studs. 
and replace the top rear stud with a special guide stud. Remove the ignition module coil assembly from the converter housing using a socket and driver for the four bolts. Use wire to support the removed parts at the cylinder head. Also use wire to secure the radiator to the vehicle body. At this point, install the engine support bar assembly. Place the support in the engine compartment and connect the bar hooks to the engine brackets. Also be sure to position the stabilizer foot on the engine. After removing both front wheels, raise the vehicle and drain the transaxle fluid. The vehicle raised, remove the left and right front wheel opening splash shield to cradle retainers. Use a screwdriver to lift the fastener centers. Remove the front splash shield. The shield has two screws in the front and two plastic retainers in the rear. Remove the left and right lower ball joints using the procedure discussed previously. Then remove the exhaust downpipe by first separating the pipe from the exhaust manifold. Remove the two bolts holding the front exhaust pipe bracket. Then remove the bolts attaching the catalytic converter to the exhaust pipe and remove the pipe. This is followed by removing the engine to transaxle stiffening bracket. Now remove the three remaining rear transaxle mount bracket bolts. Loosen the mount center bolt and allow the bracket to swing down. Next, remove the converter housing dust cover. Three bolts hold it. Separate the flex plate from the torque converter by taking out its four attaching bolts. Separate the steering gear from the cradle by removing the two bolts. After unclipping the brake line from the cradle, remove the following mount to cradle bolts. Lower engine, lower transaxle, and front transaxle. Then support the cradle with the powertrain support dolly and remove the cradle to body bolts. Lower the cradle from the vehicle. Lower the vehicle on the lift and adjust the engine support fixture to lower the rear of the transaxle. It should be low enough to allow the valve body cover to clear the body on the left side. Separate the left drive axle from the transaxle using a large screwdriver or a pry bar. Use wire to support the left drive axle. Then support the transaxle with a jack. Remove the bottom two bolts attaching the converter housing to the engine block. As before, install a guide stud, this time in place of the bottom rear bolt for the converter housing. Then remove the shift cable from the manual shaft lever and the converter housing. Separate the transaxle from the engine and lower it from the car. Installing a new transaxle is simply the reverse of removal. Be sure to torque all bolts to exact service manual specifications, remove all support wires, and refill the transaxle with 6.8 liters of Dexron II fluid. To ensure proper transaxle operation, put the vehicle through all of its shift ranges. And then road test it. As a Saturn technician, you are the key to upholding the Saturn commitment to superior service and customer satisfaction.